This is the Bell and Howell projector. Use it and care for it the way the manufacturer recommends, and it will give you good service over a long period of time. On one side of the projector case, there are two doors to which various parts and accessories are attached. And on the other side, there is another door on which the speaker is mounted. The speaker is on split hinges and lifts off. The speaker cord plugs into the receptacle, which is second from the left in the oblong panel. Your projector may have its speaker in a separate case. If so, the speaker requires manual attachment of its cable at the speaker end as well as at the projector. Notice that the separate case speakers plug into the first receptacle at the left of the oblong panel instead of the second. Take the Y cord from its storage place in front of the lens. Notice that it has a pair of plugs branching from one end. Insert the flat plug into the amplifier receptacle, the round plug into the projector receptacle. To complete the electrical connections, insert the third plug into a wall receptacle. Take the feed reel arm from its storage place. Insert the arm into its socket in the top front of the projector case, pressing down until it locks into place. Now, remove the takeoff arm and insert it into its socket. Some projectors, having separate speakers, carry the real arms in the speaker case. Some models have flat real arms, which attach with thumb screws inside the case. To finish setting up the projector, bring the takeoff spring belt through the slot in the case and loop it without twisting around the takeoff arm pulley. The front spring belt is placed in the same way over the pulley of the feed reel arm. The small door in front of the projector lens is opened as we get ready to try the projector. We make sure the clutch control is turned clockwise as far as it will go to link the power of the motor to the film moving mechanism. Then we set the direction switch at forward position and the sound silence switch at sound because we plan to show a sound picture. Now snap on the projector switch and also the lamp switch. The projector is now operating. Move the whole machine to center the light beam horizontally on the screen. To center it vertically, turn the tilt knob on the front of the projector case. Now loosen the lens locking screw and slide the lens back and forth to focus the light image. Turning the lens provides a finer adjustment. There will be a last minute adjustment of focus later when there is an actual picture on the screen. With setting up completed, the lamp and projector switches are snapped off. Now snap on the amplifier switch. The tubes of the amplifier will warm up while we're threading the film. Place the reel of film on the spindle of the feed reel arm, square hole first, and snap it into place. The film comes off the front of a correctly wound reel. With an empty reel on the take-up arm, we are ready to begin threading. Pull off about four feet of leader and slip the film into the slot in the case below the feed reel arm and over the guide roller. Now bring the leader under and around the first sprocket and push it as far as it will go. Press the tab to open the guard and pull gently on the film until the perforations fit over the sprocket teeth. Then release the tab. Next, the gate lever is swung upward to open the film gate. Then a loop is formed in the leader. The loop follows the outline which is permanently marked on the metal body of the machine. 
Hold the film snugly in the channel and press the film gate lever down as far as it will go, closing the gate. Now form a second loop following the outline and thread the film into the second sprocket. To test the seating of the film in the gate, turn the clutch control counterclockwise. This disengages the motor and makes easier the moving of the hand turning knob which causes the film to travel through the gate. If the lower loop shortens, Open the gate again and reset the loops. Rotating the hand turning knob shows that this time the loops are holding. Before going on with the threading, turn back the clutch. Then slip the film under the upper roller of the stabilizer, around the sound drum, under the lower roller of the stabilizer, and over the third sprocket. Pull the film until the stabilizer moves toward the sound drum. Press the tab and allow the film to slip back until it engages the sprocket. Release the tab and lead the film down and under the twin rollers of the snubber and under the idler roller. Then slide the film into the slot at the rear of the projector case and onto the hub of the take-up reel where it is fastened. Give the reel a couple of turns clockwise. Pressing the take-up lock lever drops the reel into take-up position. This will avoid spilling the film on the floor. Threading is now complete. Turn up the volume control until a hissing sound is heard, indicating that the amplifier is operating. The volume control is turned down to the one-quarter on position. The projector is ready for operation. Snapping the projector switch starts the film moving. The lamp switch is next. Rotating the lens barrel allows a last-minute adjustment of focus. An out-of-frame picture is corrected by turning the framer control until the frame line disappears. When the sound starts, adjust the volume to the degree of loudness you need. The tone control operates like the one on a radio. To show a still picture, turn the clutch control counterclockwise. If no picture appears, move the shutter out of the way of the light by rotating the hand turning knob. Focus the still picture if necessary. Although the machine automatically protects the film during still picture projection, darker scenes might absorb heat and suffer damage. Hold such still pictures no longer than you need to. To continue with the movie, turn the clutch control clockwise and focus again. To run the film backward, turn the volume very low, then stop the machine. Place the direction switch at the reverse position and restart the projector. To run forward again, stop the projector, place the direction switch at forward position, and start the machine once more. Turn the volume back up. When the film reaches its final fade out, Darken the screen by snapping off the lamp switch. As the sound ends, turn the volume low. Put the amplifier switch at the off position if no more sound films are to be shown at this time. The directions given up to now are for operating the projector with sound film. For showing silent films, the directions are the same, except that the sound silent switch will be at the silent position and the amplifier switch will be off. Allow the trailer that is at the end of every sound or silent film to run completely through the machine onto the take-up reel. If the film is to be rewound, first interchange the reels. Then the end of the film is led back over the top of the full reel and fastened to the empty reel. Next, the take-up lock lever is pressed and the reel lifted and held until the lever is released. Actual rewinding can now begin. Check the direction switch to make sure it is set in forward position and snap on the projector switch. Run the motor until all of the film has been wound back on the original reel. 
pressing the takeoff lock lever drops the mechanism back into takeoff position, ready for the next showing. Good care is as important as correct operation. Cleaning is an important part of projector care. Loosening the locking screw allows the projector lens to be removed for cleaning. Wipe it gently with the lens cleaning tissue recommended by the manufacturer. If the surfaces are greasy or very dirty, apply the lens cleaning fluid obtained from the manufacturer and polish with dry tissue. Clean gate and aperture plate before and after each showing because others using the machine may be forgetful. Let's begin with the gate shoe. Grasp it by its metal frame and pull it out. It is relatively clean. Here is a highly magnified view of a gate shoe that has been neglected. Don't allow yours to look like this. Clean it with a cloth, dampened if necessary. All surfaces should be mirror bright. Any hard substances stuck to the shoe are scratched off with the fingernail or a toothpick. Never use tools for this. If these particles are not removed, they might scratch the film. With the small projector brush held horizontally, clean the aperture plate carefully, making sure to brush away any dirt at the edges of the aperture itself. Blowing at the aperture once or twice is also effective. Replace the gate shoe by fitting its guides into the little grooves and pushing it inward until it clicks into place. The three sprockets will require cleaning also. Check them after every few showings. Take hold of the handles of the two condensers and pull them out. Clean them as you did the projector lens and put them back into place. The reflector is turned counterclockwise and removed. It is cleaned like the lens and returned to its place. Dirt on the sound drum can lower the quality of the sound. Clean the drum frequently. To clean the sound optical system, first loosen the screw high on the side of the exciter lamp compartment. On some projectors, the thumb screw is at the front. After the thumb screw is loosened, pull the cover off. With lens tissue wrapped around the toothpick, the front face of the lens is clean. Then the rear face of the lens. And after that, the little mirror behind the sound drum. While the exciter lamp compartment cover is off, is a good time to show how the exciter lamp is replaced. First, remove the metal light shield by pulling it upward. Your projector may not have a light shield, or it may have one that looks like this. It comes off in the same way. Remove the exciter lamp by pressing it down firmly, turning it counterclockwise and lifting it out. Fit the holes of the new lamp over their respective pins. Press down and turn clockwise as far as it will go. Before replacing the light shield, wipe it clean with a cloth. Hold it so that the opening points toward the front face of the lens. Press it down into place adjusting it until the beam from the lamp is centered in the opening of the light shield. Then the exciter lamp compartment cover goes back on. To replace the projection lamp, unscrew the cap. If the lamp is hot, grasp it by the metal frame. Insert the new lamp with the vertical tongue to the right. Turn the lamp slightly one way or the other to fit the tongue into its slot and screw the cap on again. If no sound is heard from the speaker, it might mean that the fuse has burned out. To replace the fuse, use the edge of a coin to turn the fuse holder counterclockwise. Take out the red portion of the fuse holder. 
Remove the blown fuse and replace it with the new one of a size prescribed by the manufacturer. Never put in a fuse larger than the one called for by your projector's instruction book. If the new fuse does not restore the sound, the projector will have to be turned in for servicing. Lay the projector on its side so the amplifier can be taken out for the replacement of tubes. The set of four small screws near the corners hold the amplifier in place. On some models, these screws are located a little differently. The screws are taken out. Then the amplifier is withdrawn and set down. Now, reach in to disconnect the exciter lamp lead wire plug located at the rear. On your projector, the lead wire plug may be small and its receptacle found to the right of the amplifier control panel. With lead wire detached, the amplifier is disconnected from the projector and may be taken away. Remove the amplifier tubes for testing. Replace those found defective and return the others to the amplifier. To replace the photocell, loosen the thumb screw and pull off the cover. The photocell is the larger of the two tubes under the cover. When replacing the cover, make sure that the pins are inserted into the holes in the photocell base. Tighten the thumb screw firmly, but without the use of tools. The amplifier in your projector may look like this. The photocell has no cover, and the tube next to it has a clip at the top. Be sure this clip is connected firmly. When the tubes have been replaced, and the amplifier brought back to the projector, plug in the exciter lamp lead wire, and reinsert the amplifier into the base of the projector. A broken or worn out spring belt on the feed reel arm is withdrawn for replacement. Insert the new belt in the slot at the top of the case and push it down into the slot in the projector until the end of the belt reappears. Then bring it up through the case and hook the two ends together. Secure the joining with a pair of long-nosed pliers. Place the belt without a twist over the pulley. A new take-up belt is installed by pushing it through one of the two slots at the base of the arm. Guiding it by hand and eye around the take-up pulley inside the case and back through the other slot. Regular lubrication ensures good service. Without it, serious trouble can develop. There are three oil cups on top of the projector case. After every four hours of operation, put a drop of oil into the first cup. After every 16 hours of operation, put a drop of oil into each of the other two cups. Your oil cups may be up of the projector itself. The reservoirs connected with the holes in the three sprockets must be well oiled. To do this, lay the machine on its side. Then put three drops of oil into each hole. The sprockets are lubricated in this way every three months by the calendar. Wipe off the excess oil. After every hundred hours of operation, the shafts of the two snubber rollers and idler roller receive one drop of oil each. Also, after every hundred hours of use, the shaft of the rear guide roller gets one drop of oil, and that goes for the front guide roller too.
On the takeoff pre alarm, there is a little grease cup that must be filled after each hundred hours of operation. Use the grease supplied by the projector manufacturer. Proper lubrication, cleaning, and operation will mean good pictures and sound for your audience and long life for your projector. <laughs>